Now, moving on to the next, obviously everyone's talking about replacements now. Now, I've got something that I've written that will publish by the time this comes out, so let's discuss it, Terry. I'll throw some names at you. I want to get your thoughts. Mm-hmm. The first is Michael Maguire. Uh, I honestly think that Michael Maguire should not take this job because it just reminds me too much of the West Tigers at the moment in the fact that they're making really, really poor decisions. Um, their juniors, you know, they've been they've been telling us about this extreme talented crop of juniors for a very, very long time, and the squad is not really that good. It's aging and it's injury plagued. I think Michael Maguire should see how he goes with New South Wales first, and maybe try and coach them for a couple of years, and then get the right role for him. Fair enough. Uh, the second one you mentioned before, Jason Riles, who I think is um, the front runner at this stage. Uh, he turned down the Dragons, looking for the right role. Is this the mm-hmm. right role? I think, I think for any any coach coming now, like coming through now, I think they need to do their homework on what they're doing and and what they're getting themselves into. And Jason Riles is at Melbourne. Right now, as we speak, right? So he will be able to run his eyes over, you know, all the opportunities that are going to be coming up. And, you know, like Craig Fitzgibbon, he knocked back, you know, Craig Fitzgibbon knocked back four opportunities before he went to Cronulla. Andrew Webster, um, you know, went went to New Zealand because he felt that was the right place for him to go and, and learn to be a coach. You don't just want to jump in because the job's available. And I honestly feel that the Eels need to get someone who is experienced and, you know, shake that club upside down. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, the next one I've got is John Morris. I don't think there's enough experience for John Morris. Um, it's not a bad shout, but if, I, if I'm if i Parramatta, I'm, I'm, probably going, I'm probably going the path of Jason Riles over John Morris. Fair enough. Uh, what about Sam Burgess, who has... The Wolves humming at the moment in England. Um, not afraid to make the big calls. He, he he said what he said at South, and you know, largely he's been proven at least partially correct. Uh, this feels like it would be too early for Sam Burgess to come back. I would like to see him get two or three seasons of experience, Warrington or Wigan, or you know, move to St Helens, wherever, wherever it's going to be. I know Warrington are, are, are a big club over there as well, so see if he can get a Premiership or a Challenge Cup. Um, and then not just return back on the coattails of one season. I'd like to see him do it for multiple seasons before he comes back and tests himself in the NRL. And with that, I think that he will do that for the next three seasons and end up back at South Sydney. Yep, look, completely fair. Uh, look, the main name you mentioned, Justin Holbrook, who I have as third. Justin Holbrook, for mine, is the coach that I think Parramatta should go and nail on a two-year deal tomorrow. Yeah, and two two left to centre ones. The first one's Luke Burt, who has Burley Bears leading the comp. He did go eight uh, zero and eight, I believe, or zero and seven at the Titans. Um, look, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call a spade a spade. Craig Bellamy couldn't have got that team to win. They were absolutely rubbish. I when did Luke Burt coach the Titans? I think it was around two thousand. They were disgusting. It was a last minute thing. It was it was a bridge. He was the Luke Burt was still playing for Parramatta in two thousand. Oh, two thousand twenty rather. Uh, I'm having a look. Yeah, Gold Coast Titans. He had eight games in 2019 and lost all of them. Um, oh, look, club legend. I, the the only thing the only thing there is they went and got that next shiny coach with Brad Arthur. I don't know if Luke Burt's going to do it. I completely forgot that he was playing. That he, that he was a player. You know, I forgot all about him. Um, no. Fair enough. And last but not least. Uh, you want to talk a bloke with experience, someone who's dealt with the highest profile job of anyone. If you say Jeff Toovey, no. I'm not saying Jeff Toovey, Michael Checker. Look, left of centre, experience, um, hard, very, very hard. Not a not a bad shout as well. I'd, I'd probably put him in a top three candidate. I well, I've discussed all of them, and I, I'm you know I think there's three or four really good ones there, and a few that look. These these top candidates might tell Parramatta to take a hike. Let's let's be totally honest. So they may not end up with who they want, but they have to sell this club. And look, if Michael Checker is serious about coming to coach rugby league, Parramatta need a bloke who can deal with the media because the media's in his pocket every single day for the next six months, uh, and a bloke who you know 
Doesn't need to be mates with the players. Put it that way. I think we've learned from his loyalty. This, this, this is the situation that Parramatta find themselves in. They're bottom four in the NRL. They're second last in Jersey flag. And their New South Wales Cup team, I'm pretty sure, is eighth. They are eighth um, in a 13-team competition. So they are missing finals as well. There's there's not much for you to get really excited about, and on the player market as well, it's very dry and very bare, and I don't see someone doing a Zach Bone Max anytime soon to fall over themselves to sign Paramount. Sorry, Paramount.